Is parametrics hard in Blender? It's sure not. In this video, we will do a parametric wall in Blender's geometry nodes. This might be above beginner's level a bit, but we will do it as clear as possible. So open your mind, get yourself a cup of tea, and like the video cause we're rolling. Let's start with a new scene. Delete the default light and camera. And with any mesh you have, go to Geometry Node tab from up top, close the Info and Timeline windows cause we don't need them, and hit the New button. We have now the Group Input and Output. The input is the cube, but we won't use it now, so disconnect the input and move it away. What we need in the output is a Curve Line node, so add that from the search bar. And let me explain the process before we start. We want to add two curve lines, one horizontal as a wall width, and one vertical for the height. So if we connect this curve line to the output, we now have a line on the z-axis, cause it's the value we have on this node. I will make that zero on z to add the wall width first, and since we are on the red line, which is the x-axis, we can add the value on the start or the end of the curve line's x value. You don't need to use both the start and end unless you want to center it like here. Thus, we made the value the same, but with negative in one of them. To add a height to it, we need another curve line plugged into an instance on points node in the instance slot. This way, we add a curve line with a z value on each point of the first horizontal line and we will get two at the start because we only have two points, and the horizontal line disappear since we used an instance on points node. You can get it back with a join geometry, but we don't really need it, so let's keep it simple. To get more than two vertical lines, which is the pieces of the parametric wall, we need to subdivide the horizontal curve and we do that with the resample curve node. Add it after the curve line and adjust the count to fit. Next, we need to make this into a mesh, cause it's still just lines. So add a curve to mesh node after the instances. And for the profile, copy a curve line node and use it on the X value which is the direction to extend those vertical lines and give them thickness. So adjust the X value on the start and end, up to the width and the number of pieces you need. So we settle up on a count of 90 pieces with 0.03 for the piece width, and you can at any time change those values till it fits your scene. Let's also add an extrude node to the new mesh to extend it on the Y direction using its offset scale value. After adding the extrude mesh, the shades on this object might be off. To fix that, add a set shade smooth node and turn it off, similar to how we make the shade flat in object mode. Next to the shape of the wall, we get that mainly with two things, a set position node and a noise texture, the set position node goes after the extrude, and we need to control the offset value in it with a noise texture on the Y axis, the same extrude direction. So add a noise texture, add a combine XYZ node, and connect noise factor to the position offset through the Y axis from the combine node. Two things we need to fix. One is the instances. They are affected regardless of their geometry. And we fix that with a Realize Instance node placed after the instance on points. So as you see, 
if we mute the Realize Instance node, every piece is affected with all its points. But with it on, the noise affect all the points, which is what we want, a dynamic motion on the entire wall. The next thing to fix is the vertical points. Since we didn't add a resemble curve on it, it's still just two points, top and bottom. And you can see that clearly if we change the noise scale. So to fix that, just copy the resample node with Shift D and place it on the Z curve line. Now we can go back to the noise texture and play with the values there. Maybe put the scale on 1, and the roughness is better on 0 for smooth curves. You can also change the distortion for better result. It's all up to you. One thing you might need to do is making the back side straight, so the effect only go on one side. To do that, add a vector math on minimum after the combine node, and plug to it the extrude top as shown. We also need a normal math node, leave it on add type, and use it to control the extrude's top. This way we can make one side of the wall straight, and you might need to fix the extrude value for that. So adjust the numbers between it and the math node value. Last, but for sure, not least, is the material. And since this, a geometry node, adding it to the object directly in the material settings won't do a thing. So we need a set material node, drop it at the end, and assign any material you have in the scene. The main thing to fix here is the UV, and it's quite tricky because we need like extra five or six nodes to do that. But since we're working with still object, and if you don't intend to move the camera, you can, from the shading, switch the texture coordinate to camera, and adjust the mapping scale and rotation to get something decent. This is a fast fix for it, and though it changed depending on your view, it will give you a decent shots without any extra pain. And that's it. Like and share if you're still here, and see you in another video. Stay sharp. Goodbye.